This is exciting. We get to talk about more graphics cards. <laughs> yeah! What's up, sons? It's Blackout with Sound Attack once again, and today we are going to be talking about the new NVIDIA CPM, which is crypto mining processors. I guess they're not calling them graphics processors because it's for crypto mining, and that makes sense. So we have four models to discuss today, the 30HX, the 40HX, the 50HX, and the 90HX. If you guys are trying to chat with me, hit the join button, follow the instructions in the membership tab to get access to Rocket Chat. There you go. We're going to keep that short and sweet. And let's get into it. Boom. All righty. So as you guys can see here, this is called NVIDIA CMPHX, dedicated GPU for professional mining, designed for professional mining operations. NVIDIA CMP allows a fully open airflow optimized bracket and is configured to allow a greater number of GPUs to be controlled by one CPU. I'm not sure what they're doing there. I'm curious why they say it does optimize better for that and if there would be any actual applicable rigs in where it would have more than say i don't know a typical rtx 3060 ti or something but we'll find out optimize best mining obviously best mining <laughs> i i speak english don't worry about it nvidia gpu architecture allows you to mine more efficiently and recoup your mining investment faster but how? It doesn't tell us. No pricing here either. And here's where they will be available from as far as partners. You have Asus, Colorful, EVGA, Gigabyte, MSI, Palit, tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, and PC Partner, which I've never heard of. But there are the manufacturers we have confirmed so far for this. And then we have some specifications to go over. So first is the 30HX which is going to be 26 mega hash a second. And that will be at a rated power of 125 watts. Keep in mind, guys, we are probably going to be able to tweak this stuff. The power connector is a single eight pin, which is pretty awesome. Memory size is six gigabytes, which is eh, and availability is supposed to be Q1. I believe that's Q1 of 2021. So we should start seeing these hit the market at some point, hopefully. And I'm trying to get my hands on them, but you know, uh, we'll see what happens. Hey, if you know somebody, look it up, baby. Look it up. We need some for the channel to, to review. And then we have the 40HX, which is 36 mega hash a second at 185 watts with, once again, a single 8 pin and 8 gigabytes of memory. And that is due out in Q1 as well. Coming later on down the line, we have the 50HX and the 90HX. The 50HX will be 45 mega hash a second at 250 watts. And that will take two 8 pin connectors with a memory size of 10 gigabytes. And that is due out in Q2 of 2021. Finally, the 90HX is 86 mega hash a second at 320 watts with a dual 8 pin PCIe power requirement once again 10 gigabytes of video memory and that is also q2 now there's a couple notes down here in the bottom that you need to take into account first of all ethereum hash rate applies to the dag and algorithm in use in epoch 394 and is provided for reference clocks under room temperature conditions with good cooling whatever that means. Now it's rated power and power connectors specified for the reference design. Partner board designs may choose a different configuration. Of course, that's the same with any of these kind of early announcements, right? So let's talk about a couple things. Which cards are these? Actually the 30HX, I have no idea. The 40HX, I really have no idea. The 50HX, maybe a 3060 or a 3070. And the 90HX, maybe a 3080 or a 3090, most likely a 3080, I guess I would assume. And we don't really have enough information to go off of anything here, but here's what I think is gonna happen. So first of all, I think that all of these GPUs are going to not have the RTX module and not have the NVENC chip, which is the chip that they use for, of course, encoding in different various formats, right? So I think those two things are gonna go away completely and you're just gonna have the GPU core and you're gonna have the memory. Now they are aiming this at Ethereum mining, which I think is probably not wise 
it could be a little too late for them depending on when ethereum is going into uh, unminable and if they gimp the core clocks too much on these they won't be as good at something like ravencoin so um we're really gonna have to get some in for testing see how they operate on other algorithms determine you know how much more we can get out of them with memory overclocks like i said i presume that they are really focusing heavy on the memory bandwidth size as well as the memory speed of course that's what you would hope but the memory size is kind of worrisome as well so we have a six gigabyte which we know would be able to be on a larger bus we have the eight gigabyte which i guess could be because you have the one two depending on how they design the board or the board layout, which we also don't have, I would presume that it's close to the 3060 Ti and so on. The 10 gigabyte, obviously, we're gonna assume that the bandwidth on those is gonna be similar to the 3080 and the 3070, while the 30HX and the 40HX would be around the 3060, right? Somewhere around there. And whatever is below the 3060, maybe like a 3050 or something like that. It's really kind of, we don't know enough, but I do have a chart that I put together for you guys right here that goes over the Ethereum hash per watt, provided it is actually hitting the rated power at the highest. I think it's gonna be lower, of course, but right now you would have a hash per watt of 0.2 on the 30HX, a hash per watt of 0.19 on the 40HX, a hash per watt of 0.18 on the 50HX, and a hash per watt of 0.26 on the 90HX. So right out of the box, the Q1, if you can get your hands on it, and you have to choose between the 30HX and the 40HX, I'm gonna lean towards the 30. Now in Q2, when it launches between the 90HX and the 50HX, I'm gonna go for the more expensive model, and I'm gonna try to get that 90HX, right? And that's just purely based off of hash per watt and what they're testing. My assumption here is that I can get all of them better, but because it's already looking better for particular cards, right? The 90HX and the 30HX, I'm gonna to lean towards those two and place my bets on one of them mining a little bit better. Now we could talk about DAG size and being worried about six gigabytes of memory on the 30HX, but I don't think that we will be mining Ethereum long enough for the DAG to get to six gigabytes personally. If you think differently, let me know in the comment section below and I'd be curious on your reasoning there. We do have to worry about DAG size, of course, on Ravencoin and some of the others, uh, of course, Conflux, right? All of these other coins that we can mine and their DAGs are getting larger. We are getting over three gigabytes now on Ravencoin. We're over four gigabytes on Conflux. I think that that's gonna continue to go up. Not, I think, I know it's gonna continue to go up. So you want to take into account the longevity of the cards for your investment. And worst case scenario, if ETH goes proof of stake before you pay off the card, is this card still gonna work well on other algorithms? And all of that I will be trying to provide on this channel, of course. So if you need to know when they launch, be sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell, and we will test the cards in other algorithms. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe down below, and I will see you next Tuesday.